Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to another episode of Weekly Code Quickies, your weekly updates for the latest tech news, tricks and tips and more. As always, I'm your host, Norbert BM, and in today's topics, we're going to have Visual Studio Code in the browser and also the latest MacBook Pros. And today's sponsors are, I'm just kidding. Okay, so you probably heard by now, or if you didn't, then here it is. Visual Studio Code is now a web application and it's in the browser. It is not in all browsers, but we're going to get to that a bit later on. But if you would now go to visuals2vscode.dev, which would normally redirect you to their Visual Studio Code webpage, you will now land on the application. It seems that back in 2019, when the .dev domain opened, they bought the vscode.dev domain and didn't quite know what to do with it, or they did have some kind of an idea, and it seems that they implemented it now. So Microsoft picked up the VS Code.dev domain and made something out of it. Okay, so let's start with limitations, because there are a lot. First and foremost, Visual Studio Code, opposite to its bigger brother Visual Studio, gains its powers, I would say, through its extensions. And if I would tell you now that most of the extensions do not work, then you would say, so what gives? What should we do with Visual Studio Code? Well, we're going to get to that later on. We're going to talk about the advantages. But for now, I am kind of disappointed. Also further on, if you are a fan of Mozilla, well, Visual Studio Code does not work in Mozilla, or yes, it does work, but you cannot open a local folder it actually works in Edge, no surprise there, because it's developed by Microsoft, and it works in Google Chrome. Now, what do I mean by it works? You cannot open app, you cannot open folders, so you cannot work locally on your machine. You're going to open it up. You need to open it up in. A, uh, you need to. You need to open up a depository, like for example, one from GitHub. So what will be the advantages then? Well, the advantages few at the moment. So let's see local file viewing and editing. But as I said, only if you're on Edge or Google Chrome. Quickly take notes via preview and preview them in Markdown. That's well, I could use Notepad for that. And uh, live share sh sessions and edit your code on. Okay, so this is this is interesting. You can edit your code on lower powered machines like Chromebooks, for example. This is interesting, but if you <laughs> if you open up um, Google Chrome, it's going to need a lot of RAM. And yeah, develop on mobile devices. Now this is interesting. You develop on mobile devices. Would you? Would you really do that? I wouldn't, I know I wouldn't. I would take a look at, at the code maybe to see if it's commented out, if it's, uh, if, if documentation is okay. But I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't code on a iPad, let's just say that. So let's take a look at Visual Studio Code. Like I said, you just need to go to HTTPS forward slash forward slash VSCode.dev. Now you'll be good this is actually a web page, okay? So I could open up another web page, as you can see. But this is actually a web page. So let's try open up something. Let's select this folder. Uh, view files. Yes. It just alerts you that <laughs> the entire Microsoft team is now looking at your files. Okay. So this is the code for my previous alert buttons video. So uh, I didn't even try to. Let's just try add, adding a couple of add ons. I already installed HT, HTML boilerplate. Okay, this is working. Uh, HTML file snippets, JavaScript, ES6 snippets, Markdown, Lint. So this should, let's just see if this even works. Uh, let's create a Markdown file here. Let's call it uh, doc.md, edit the file. Okay, so cool. So let's see, let's do a title with title. And let's now hit control V and yay, it's working, it is working, okay. So at least we can do markdown. Let's do a h3. This this is VS Code. Okay, so this is working. It's now going to HTML. Let's see if I do a if we get head a head here. My font also linked up. If we try to do a class here, 
dot. No, it does not recognize it. Let's see if I try to do a bullet play, shift one. Yep, and it is working. On style, let's see if it does a autocomplete. So let's see. Hover. So if I would do it on a button in a hover state, let's see if we have a box shadow of none. Okay, this this works. If I try to hit save, hmm, it's strange. So how do we save? Uh, file, share, so I can share it. Save page, hmm, that's just dumb. That's not what I want. Actually, I think only when you exit it. Oh, okay. VS code, uh, markdown. Will it open up? Nope, it did not open up. So if we close it, then it's closed for good. Let's just see what happened to my file. Well, it's still there. But does it automatically save? It seems so. Okay. Okay, so Prettier is working. Now let's f move on and uh, check out a couple of more extensions. So extension that you would definitely need. Live server. And we're getting our warning sign. And if you click on it, you cannot install it. As you can see, we have no installation button here. Uh, live share, this works. But, well, we actually wanted to launch a server, live share extension pack. And there are a lot they are not, that they are not working. SAS. I don't think that any kind of compiler is working. Let's see, ES, let's see, React. Blah, nothing is working for React. React, native React. Okay, so this would work. And this is very important. Whoa, the snippets for ES7, React, Redux, and GraphQL do not work. That's, hmm, that's a bummer. React native tools do not work. Let's see for view. Uh, okay, view does work, not all of them. View snippets also work. This is strange. I think they're working on it. <laughs> I think they're actually working on it. So this will be interesting when it's completely up and running. But until then, I'm just going to use Visual Studio Code in, well, as a normal application. So if you have any thoughts on this, please leave them in the comment section below. I'm also going to, to have a poll for the podcast for this and yeah so that's that's kind of it it's the same it's the same thing but without all of the features i think the idea is actually not bad i just go back here so the idea i don't think is bad that you could oh one interesting thing for example on pcs or macs that we are not an admin you can still use it because it's in the browser. As long as you have access to the browser, you have access to Visual Studio Code. So I don't think that's that much of a bad idea. It's pretty cool actually. Okay, so let's move on to our next topic and that would be Apple. Everybody's favorite company. Now, as I said in my other videos, I, I am I don't have anything with Apple. I don't have anything with Microsoft. I work on both of them. I'm a pretty young <laughs> uh, Mac user. I'm using Mac for like two years, I believe. I'm also, I was a fan of the iPhone 4. Then I bought a iPhone 8, the, the second version. And it's, doing its job. Now that it just works from Apple. Yes, I like it. And I much prefer to do, I almost said serious stuff. It's not serious stuff, but things that are repetitive and I don't want to mess around. So what do I mean by that? When I'm working on Windows, I mess around. <laughs> I install things, I uninstall things. I just try things, okay? When I'm working on Mac, I'm coding or doing doing the recordings, doing my videos, doing doing my recordings for my podcast, I would much rather use Mac because it just works. It really does. And all of the 
of the softwares that I'm using for Mac, they work. And that's why I bought a Mac. But the new Macs, let's get to the new Macs. So let's take a look at this. And I'm, I'm currently only taking a look at the, I have a 16 inch MacBook Pro, the generation that came before this. I love it. It has the touch bar. It's, it's okay, but I'm missing my F button. So I also have keypad for the Mac and it has the, the Fs, the function buttons and why not? Why, why get rid of them? So what's so cool about the new Macs? They will have, so first of all, the 14 and the 16 inch. That's what we're going to talk about. They have the new chips, the M1 chips, the M1 Pro and the, and the M1 Max. They are exceptionally fast. That's one thing, but they also, but they, that not only that they're fast, they can also go to 64 gigs of RAM, not that interesting, eight terabytes of storing space. Okay, uh, 21 hours on battery life. That depends on what you're doing on it. They finally upgraded the face cam or the, the camera, the webcam within it to 1080p, finally. And yeah, weight, they gain a bit of weight and they have touch ID. So let's take a look at the new Mac and what is so special about it. Well, <laughs> I, I almost feel dumb for saying this, but take a look, but they have ports, finally. They brought back ports. So we have an HDMI input now on the right side, a um, Thunderbolt, and then finally a card reader again. What was their problem against the card reader? I don't get it. Then on the left side, we have a MagSafe, pretty cool. Uh, two, two Thunderbolt ports, and after that, a mic with higher impedance for 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 a jack input for mic for headsets with higher impedance. Now, what does this mean? You could use now. You can use now uh, studio headphones, and you don't need an amplifier for them. And this is actually pretty cool. So, will you buy one? It costs a lot. <laughs> Should you buy one? That depends on what you want to do. Are they good? Are they exceptional? I am so, so pleased with my Mac. It's an exceptional piece of technology. If you wish to, again, if you wish to buy the same thing, but uh, with a Windows interface, you're almost going to land on the same money. Now, I don't try to sell you Macs, I just, thought this was newsworthy because it is a good company. It does its job and it works. And when I'm on my machine, I want it to work. Not only that I work on it, I want it to work for me. It always has to just work. Okay. So that's it for this podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Subscribe to the podcast. Now it's on Stitcher, Spotify, uh, Apple, podcast. I'm all over the place. So catch you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.